So I want to go through some examples of manipulating um, exponentials with complex values uh, using Euler's formula. And so a typical complex root that you might encounter in a differential equations problem is uh, negative 2 plus or minus 3i. And um, if you're doing constant coefficient problems, then your solution to the, the differential equation will initially start out in this form where you have uh, a complex coefficient uh, in your exponential. And what we want to be able to do is we want to convert these to real solutions. And in order to do that, we're going to apply um, properties of complex exponentials, particularly Euler's formula, in order to turn these into real solutions involving trig functions. And so I want to just go through some of the algebra for that um, to support um, making these, uh, um, these assumptions, these leaps to the final solution that uh, I do in some of my other differential equations videos. Um, so I want to take the time here to go through how this works. And so we're going to start off with a form that looks like this. And so the, the next thing that we want to do is we want to separate out the complex part from the real part. And so we're just going to use properties of exponents. Um, we're going to have the real part is going to be this negative 2 times x because we're distributing. And then the other complex part is going to be now in its own base, and that's going to be 3xi. So remember that properties of exponents, when you're adding in the exponent, you can rewrite them as the same base, uh, but now as products. So the real part's here, the complex part is here. And so now what we can do is we can apply Euler's formula to the complex part. And so you may remember that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And so we're going to apply that formula just to this portion, just to the complex portion. And so you're going to keep the real part. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to take everything in front of the i and put it inside the trig functions. So cosine 3x plus i sine. Now, if we did the negative version, then what would happen is we would end up with basically the same thing because we would follow all exactly the same steps, except we would end up with a negative right here and right here because we would, we would break this out and we would get negative 3xi here, and so the negative would go inside the trig function. But cosine is an even function, and so the negative doesn't do anything. So we can simplify that away and simply get rid of it, because cosine negative 3x and cosine 3x are the same, but for the sine function, that's an odd function, and so we can pull the negative sign out through the sign and put it in front here. And so what happens now is we can add these two expressions together. And if we want, we can if we add them, we just get 2 cosine 3x. It's one real solution. And if we subtract them, so this one minus this one, 
then we end up with 2i sine 3x. So this 2i can be absorbed into our coefficient, our c1 or c2 coefficient, and so we're left with what is otherwise a real function. And we'll just put some brackets on it just to make this totally clear. So again, 2i is a constant. It can be absorbed into our coefficient. And if we choose c1 or c2 to be complex, then complex times complex will become real. And so this will disappear. And so we get these two solutions, which are equivalent, two real solutions, which are equivalent to our complex exponential. And every time you're writing one of these, solving one of these problems, you can't leave it at complex exponential because we don't allow complex solutions. You need to write them as um, real solutions. Now, when we do um, Cauchy-Euler problems, we end up with a similar situation. Uh, but now we have slightly different math, although we're still going to use Euler's formula. Uh, but now we have, um, instead of having an x in the exponent, we have an x or a t in this case in the base. And so we need to do a little slightly different math in order to simplify this, but it, we apply the same formulas, the same rules. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to, again, we're going to split this into t to the negative 2 and t to the negative 3i. And I did the negative version in this case, but obviously it doesn't really make any difference in the end. Uh, okay, so then in order to apply Euler's formula, I need to take this complex portion and I need to turn it into e to something. And so the way that we're going to do that is to recall that t is equal to e to the ln t. And so when we make this substitution, just for the second one, we don't need to worry about it for this one, um, e to the ln t to the negative 3i. Oops. Then we can, because this is an exponent to an exponent, we can multiply the exponents together. And so we get... That part doesn't change, but now we get e to the, so negative 3 ln t times i. And I want to be very explicit about this. The i is not, in fact, in the log. Um, what is being multiplied here is this negative 3 ln t is being multiplied by the i. So this negative 3 natural log of t is our theta from our formula. So again, just go back and recopy our formula. So anything that's multiplying i becomes our theta for our formula. And so all we have to do now is simply plug in this Euler's formula. So we get cosine negative 3 ln t plus i sine negative 3 ln t inside the trig functions. And again, just as we saw before, we can then separate these out. If we add these together, we'll just get 2 times t to the negative 2 cosine. And again, cosine is even, so we can drop the negative sign. And if we subtract them, then we get a constant 2i times this function sine. 
um, 3ln t. And for this problem, um, we can pull the negative sign out. And again, the negative will get absorbed into the constant. And so that's why we get solutions of this form. Uh, it's important to remember that this coefficient um, in this Cauchy-Euler type problem, uh, it goes outside the log but inside the trig function and not inside the log.